Hello and welcome to the third ever Disc Golf Valley Invitational. I'm your host, Greg Guthrie, the luckiest guy. Jeremy Colling and Paul Ulibarri couldn't make it, so you're stuck with me. We have nine holes of gripping Disc Golf Valley action coming your way featuring some of the best to ever throw digital plastic. First up, from California, Herman Davenport, better known as Bagger, winner of this year's Virtual European Open, top 20 all-time player rating, internal beta tester, players page admin, and so much more. He'll throw some aggressive lines that'll either put him on top or have him completely blow up. Next is Finland's finest, Johnny Koronen, or simply Johnny, one of only seven players to ever top the world rankings. If you haven't seen his trick shot videos, pause this right now, go watch some of that madness, and come back to appreciate the greatness that he is bringing to this field. Next up, uh, David Bargman, aka D Bargs, out of Austin, Texas, the highest rated Disc Golf Valley player ever, winner of 11 Hops and Heiser events, 20 Pro Tours, 3 Global League events, and pretty much anything else he's ever cared to win. D Bargs just does whatever he wants. And finally, Rauta, Jerry Rautakorpi from Sweden by way of Finland, Global League champion, 2021 virtual DDO champ, top five all time in player rating and pro tour wins, and the only player with his own stamp in the game. So that's our field. Let's look at bags. This is Bagger's bag. The bottom row shows the four most common rives. He favors the river over the explorer. And he's got the skip grace in there too. Maybe we'll see some aggressive base runs with that. Interesting to see the claymore after it was only just recently added to the game. Johnny's bag uh, is still holding on to three Ballista Pros, including the wind turn, which nobody bags. He also has a skip fairway, which I guess you just use if you're so good you get bored, and a dagger. I'd take real issue with this bag if Johnny weren't undeniably better than I am. D Barks must not own any blue putters just leaves those slots alone. Uh, two seven speeds and a couple out of production team series discs with that Emerson Keith Explorer and Tristan Tanner Fuse. Rauta with a triple flex here. Uh, Pure with his custom stamp and Ikigai Springs musket with his name on it and a one of a kind champion ride commemorating his Global League win. Flexing like nobody else in the Valley can. All right, let's get to the gameplay. It uh, looks like we're starting at Windswept Fields. This is hole number seven. Pretty simple right to left, par three. I expect all of these players to do what Bagger's doing here. Take something, throw it high, and have it spike down near the basket for a simple deuce. So he throws the sapphire. Looks like Johnny's up next. Gonna do the same shot, more or less, but he's gonna use the Explorer and get close enough. Here comes Debargs. Going to do the exact same thing, uh, but a musket. So at least we're getting a little bit of disc variety here for the exact same shot. And finally, it's going to be Jerry. So Rauta is going to take his time a little bit with this Explorer shot. I don't know if he's <laughs> trying to do something specific. Oh, look, he's trying to hit that limb and then get a bad roll away. Um, good thing he took the time to do that, uh, but he should still be just fine from there. He should be out, yeah, so he'll shoot first and take the hope here. I guess he throws in with the hope instead of the fuse and knock it down for a two. And everybody else should be close enough that um, no sweat here. Everybody will walk away one under after the first hole and ready to move on to hopefully a windswept hole that can bring in a little bit more interesting gameplay or different strategy maybe somebody can do an ace uh, let's see what we've got coming up next so hole two is going to be windswept hole nine um, great so we maybe see some ace runs here um, hopefully the wind is uh, cooperative and we can see some of these guys make a run at it not the best win for this um, let's see what bagger chooses He's going for the Claymore. All right, maybe he's got a new line with this new mold, and now it's going to be a little bit short. Uh, the wind just pushed it down too much, but he should be high, fine for birdie from there. Next up is Johnny. All right, taking the Explorer. Definite ace running here, but 
Um, also going to come up short. A much bigger skip than he was expecting right there. Um, going into debargs. And, all right, he picked the fuse. So taking the windbreak fuse, this is a layup. I'm just going to hit the pin and take a tap in and uh, walk away with the birdie and not have to sweat anything with that throw in with the water behind the basket. Rauta is going to do the same thing it looks like here. Take the windbreak fuse, throw it down for a simple deuce, and not worry too much about the potential for taking a, a bogey if you miss this putt or throw in. Um, Johnny's not too far. He's going to putt with the pure from there. I think Bagger's in the exact same spot. And so he's going to throw in with the fuse. So a little different strategy between the two of those. And here's Rauta tapping in his. And t -Barg's literally had a tap in. So that puts us all at minus two. Moving on to the third windswept hole, which is going to be windswept hole three. So par four here. Um, looks like there's going to be a tailwind. Um, so the pond won't come into play too much. Uh, so we'll see if anybody <laughs> tries to go for an aggressive skip ace. Um, looks like Bagger's still got the box. He's going to throw the glide roll rive, that barrel age Thompson Heiser edition, and park it right next to the basket. That'll be an easy eagle for him. Next up is Johnny, and he is going to take the skip. All right, so let's see if he can get it close. Maybe needed a little more power on that. Yeah, the, the skip's not going to quite be high enough to run the basket. He should be just fine for his eagle after that. Debargs throwing the, the forehand as well. So in this wind, they're all going forehand, it looks like. His is going to, well, I thought it was going to roll <laughs> right up under the basket, but it decided to have a little victory lap before it finished. And now finally Rauta is going to also throw a forehand with the roll rive, and we should expect the same result for him that we saw with the other guys. So it's going to land near the basket and check up with that roll attribute and they're all going to put it in for an eagle. So once they finish up, after three holes, all at windswept fields, we're going to see everybody at four under par um, tied up. Kind of what we expect out of a, a field of players that are this stacked. Um, it's really going to take maybe a difficult hole an ace, um, something that's going to create a little bit of separation because with those holes, they are all going to be automatic. All right, let's see what the second course is going to be. All right, Sunshine Glade. Um, hole one, uh, I think the world aces this hole 15% of the time, so we're going to expect at least one ace out of these four legends of the valley. Uh, first up, uh, Bagger with the pure, not quite enough, hits the cage. So he's going to tap in for birdie. And um, we'll see if Johnny can collect one. What disc is this? A skip musket. All right, he still, I think, hit chains there. So uh, gave it a good run with that. Unconventional. Uh, Debargs going with the fuse, forehand, and cans it. All right, that's what we expect from these guys. Uh, we, going to get at least one ace out of them um, with a hole that's this straightforward. Jerry's going for the hope and it's long enough and sticky enough. I didn't realize the hope could make it quite so easily. So we have two aces. All right, so um, Debargs and Rauta take a one-stroke lead over Johnny and Bagger by converting the ace on Sunshine 1. So let's see if uh, Johnny and Bagger can catch up on the next hole. Um, okay, we're Sunshine Glade 5. Uh, we're going to see all the players throw over the stream here, um, cut it close, and uh, look for the eagle on this par 4. So first up is Debargs after his ace, and he's going to take the, the light glide rive on a little bit of a backhand flex. Probably wants it to go more to the right than that. Yeah, he's going to be in the the mess over there. He'll probably have a look and be just fine. Jerry is going to take the same disc. Looks like he's aiming a little bit lower. 
Um, I don't think those trees have any collision on them, um, so pretty safe. And uh, little style points off of the picnic table, and he should be set up just fine for his eagle. All right, Bagger goes right through the trees. Looks like he's going for the ace run here. Oh, <laughs> so close. All right, so Bagger's definitely taking the more aggressive lines as I, as I predicted. Let's see if Johnny's gonna do the same. Now he's gonna throw the light glide. And um, looks like he gets it out to the right, but still not maybe quite as much as he'd like. Gets caught up under the, the picnic table. And um, he's gonna throw first for his eagle and makes it but he's still one stroke back as his of Debargs and Rauta. Debargs nails his, so he's in for Eagle. Um, Bagger, real quick, and finishes off his Eagle as well. And finally Rauta to uh, have everybody Eagle, Sunshine 5, as we would kind of expect from them. Um, so, eagle all the way across the board, uh, Debarks and Rauta hold on to their one-stroke lead going into the final Sunshine Glade hole. Alright, Sunshine 3. Um, another ace run here. A few different ways that you can run this one. We'll see uh, how they attack it. I think Debarks should still have the box, so he's going to go backhand, middle arrow into the flowers, straight back pull, and nails it. Another another ace for Debargs, really putting the pressure on the rest of the card. Let's see if Jerry's going to take his line. Nope, same disc, but he's going forehand, aiming a little bit higher up on that pin marker. And nails it as well. <laughs> These guys are unbelievable. All right. All right, so uh, they're not going to let Johnny and Bagger catch up on this hole. Bagger's going with the Claymore. Does he have this line figured out? Three for three. Oh my gosh. All right, Johnny. Pressure's on. You're going to get the Explorer. I guess forehand. That can't be max power. Okay. It's going to... I guess he's got this dialed in. Oh my gosh. Four for four. Everybody aces star ace frame. Um, if you wondered why you didn't get invited to this Disc Golf Valley Invitational, maybe that's why. These guys are on another level. Wow. All right. The last three holes. Uh, all right. Headed to Oak Hill. Hole one. Uh, we should expect everybody to throw a skip driver up there close. Um, this is an eagle or die. And um, I can't imagine that any of these guys are going to die on this hole. So we'll see. Debargs started off. He's going to throw his glide skip drive up here. And that should be just fine. Uh, looks like Jerry gonna finally get to whip out his champion disc and we get to see some of the the nice sparkles behind that maybe a little bit further left than he'd like to but at least it's pretty and I think he'll be just fine for Eagle from there uh, Bagger's gonna do the same disc the same line and probably get the same result uh, if you've got it and it's not broke uh, no need to deviate at all and he might be CTP, and uh, Johnny's going to do the same. See if he can, at least, maybe we just do a CTP competition, because <laughs> this hole's not going to... Um, oh, we got a pin shot. I think that, that should do it. All right, so Johnny's going to win CTP as everybody else cleans up their eagles. Um, so let's see, that still leaves us with Debargs and Rauta with a one-stroke lead, over Johnny and Bagger with two holes to play. So um, those guys are going to have to be a little bit aggressive if they're going to catch up. Uh, we'll see if some of these last two Oak Hill holes, maybe they're ones that um, can provide a little bit of separation between these top of the top players. All right, hole eight of the Disc Golf Valley Invitational. Only two to go, and it is Oak Hill eight appropriately. Um, I'm excited about seeing this. A lot of different ways to play it, especially depending on the wind. Are they going to go forehand, backhand? Uh, what disc are they going to select? Um, Debargs is... Um, Alright, so pretty simple wind. Going a lot further left than I ever have, uh, but I guess he knows something I don't. 
So look at that, it, yeah, it comes into the hill perfectly there. That'll be set up just fine, exactly where he wants it for the eagle. Let's see if Rauta has a different play. All right, he's going wide left too. I guess all these guys <laughs> know something I don't. Um, so I guess all you have to do is miss that tree and you're golden. It's even gonna roll up to make it slightly easier for him. And now here comes Bagger. So he's gonna, okay, he's gonna do the backhand play and throw the glide skip. He's gonna let, hit the, exactly where, he, no way. <laughs> oh my gosh. Bagger with the Albatross nails it to catch up with D Bargs and Rauta. Look, I'm glad that we have the, the replay here. Just hits the hill perfectly. Needs a little <clears throat> to get in there. Amazing. Uh, classic bagger there. Um, who who aces who kill eight? Um, oh my gosh. All right. And Johnny, is he going to do the same? Now he's going to hit the tree and check up where the, the other three guys or the other two guys are. All right. So I would expect Johnny to get his eagle here. Debarg's and route to do the same, and as long as that's the case, we'll uh, not jinx Jerry here. All right, route is in for Eagle, and finally Debarg's as well. Okay, so three-way tie for the lead right now between Debarg's, Rauta, and now Bagger after that incredible ace on Oak Hill 8. Going into the final hole, um, let's see if anybody can separate from the field. Okay, Oak Hill number five. Par four, um, depending on the wind, you know, you could get an ace run skip up at the basket, um, but you don't want to be too aggressive um, because you could go OB long. Um, Bagger is going to take the light glide rive and just bombing over there. Um, ooh, want to hit the pin? Oh no! After his ace, he sails long, goes OB. I can't imagine that all the other guys are going to do that. So here comes Debargs. Maybe he aimed a little bit higher than Bagger. Doesn't hit the pin, um, and his checks up. Just the the difference of just nothing on that aim point. Um, Rauch is going to come in. All right, same disc. Let's see if he can keep it in bounds. Looks like he's going to aim more or less in the same place that the other guys did. And, all right, is he going to hit the pin? Nope. Oh, but he did get a bit of a friendly dead skip there, so he's totally safe. And, Johnny, is he going to be aggressive? Now he's going to throw the roll, Ballista Pro. That's going to land short, but um, not really test OB at all. And if you're confident in your throwing skills, no worries at all about landing short and um, not taking the bagger and, and going OB. Um, unfortunate for, for Herman here after his heroics on hole eight, but he's gonna have to finish for birdie there from OB. And then Debargs is going to clean that up. I almost spoke too soon. And finally, Rauta. So, as long as this goes in, as we would all expect it to, then we will have Jerry Rauta Corpy at minus 16, Debargs at minus 16 as your Disc Golf Valley Invitational Champs, uh, Johnny and Bagger uh, coming up a stroke short at minus 15. Looks like we had seven aces in this round with only 11 birdies. These guys are unreal. Congrats to Debargs and Rauta third Disc Golf Valley Invitational Champs. Good luck out there.